One of the ways to create some really cool effects in your photos is by using layer masks. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to use masks in Photopea. Masks are used to hide a part of a layer non-destructively, meaning that all of the pixel data on the layer will not be destroyed and can be revealed later if you edit the mask. You can find a link to any images I use in the description if you want to follow along. First, I'll duplicate the layer and I'll rename the background layer to destructive and layer 1 to non-destructive and I'll hide the non-destructive layer for now. Let's say we wanted to get rid of some of the sky at the top of the image. I'll activate the rectangle select tool, make a selection of the sky and just press delete. The sky that was contained in our selection is now gone but it's deleted permanently. All we could do is press Control Z to undo. But what if we made several edits? We would have to undo all of the edits up until that point to get the sky back. And with Photopea, we only have 30 steps in our history if you're a free user and 60 if you're a premium user. To work non-destructively, we can use layer masks which allow us to hide a portion of the layer without permanently erasing that pixel data. I'll hide the destructive layer and unhide and select the non-destructive layer. We have two types of masks that we can use, the roster mask and the vector mask. In this video, we'll be covering the roster mask, but vector masks work similarly. To add a roster mask, you can click Add Roster Mask underneath the Layers panel, or you can go to the Layer menu to Roster Mask and add from there. We'll take a look at those options in a minute, but for now, let's click on Add Roster Mask below the Layers panel. Next to the layer we added a mask to, we now have a small thumbnail showing us the mask. If you hold down Alt and click on the mask thumbnail, the mask will be shown on the canvas. The way a roster mask works is by letting the layer image through any areas that are painted white on the mask layer and by hiding any areas that are painted black. I'll Alt click the mask to hide it and switch to the brush tool. Set the foreground color to black so we can hide parts of the image and with the mask selected, start painting on the canvas. Anywhere we paint black, the image is hidden behind the mask. But if later you decide that you want to bring some of the sky back, all you have to do is set the foreground color to white and with the mask selected, start painting where you want to reveal. This way, we can work non-destructively, hiding and revealing anything we want at any time. If I Alt-click the mask again, you can see what the mask looks like black areas to hide pixels and white areas to reveal pixels. If we set the foreground to a gray and paint on the image, when I alt click to hide the mask, that area is now semi-transparent. You could also use a gradient from black to white to fade in over an area. If you want to hide the mask, you can shift click on the mask thumbnail to enable or disable it or just right click the thumbnail and choose disable or enable. You can also delete the mask by right clicking it and selecting delete. I'm going to alt click the mask to show it and then press B to select the brush tool. I'll paint everything white so we let all of the image through. I'll switch back to black and paint one circle in the sky area. Alt click the mask again to hide it. Now with the mask selected you can open the Properties panel and we have two settings here we can adjust. Density gives you control over the opacity of the mask. Set to 255, it applies the mask at full strength, just like what you painted on the mask layer. But as you turn it down, the mask has less effect until it's down to zero, which acts like there's no mask at all. Next, we have Feather. Feather adds a bit of blur on the edges of any masked areas, which can give a more natural transition between masked and unmasked areas. We can also add a mask from the menu bar, where we can choose to create a mask from a selection we've made. I'll delete the mask we have on this layer by right-clicking it and selecting Delete Roster Mask. Then I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool to make a selection of the man. It's not a perfect selection, but it'll do for this example. Once you have your selection, go to Layer and down to Roster Mask. The first two options are Add Reveal All and Add Hide All. When we created a mask from the Layer panel, it used Reveal All. Add Hide All works just the opposite. 
It creates a mask that hides the entire layer, and then you'll have to paint white to reveal what you want to show. Neither of these options require a selection to use them, but the next two do, Reveal Selection and Hide Selection. These create a mask based off your selection and either hide or reveal the selected area. Let's reveal the selection first. As you can see, it's created a mask and revealed just our selection, hiding the rest of the layer. But this isn't what I want. I want to create a masked shape of this man to hide him, but then move the mask so it looks like he's being followed by a shadow version of himself. I'll press Ctrl Z to undo, and we'll go to Layer, Roster Mask, and Hide Selection. Let's add a solid black layer beneath the layer we're working on. Below the Layers panel, click on New Adjustment Layer and select Color Fill. Then double-click the new layer and click on the color swatch and change it to black. I want to move the mask layer to the left, but if we select the mask and activate the Move tool and try to move it, we move both the layer and the mask since they are linked together. If you want to move just the mask or just the layer, click on this link icon between the layer and the mask to unlink them. Now we can move either one freely. With the mask selected, drag it to the left and place it behind the man. Once you have the mask placed, you can click where the link was to reactivate it, and we can move them around together again. I'll duplicate the layer and delete the mask. You can drag and drop the mask from one layer to another. Or if you want to copy the mask over to another layer, just hold down Alt and then drag and drop and it will create a copy of the mask to the other layer. Using a mask on a regular layer is great when you want to hide something non-destructively, but one of the most powerful things you can do with masks is using them on adjustment layers. I'll switch over to our second image and let's add a new adjustment layer and select Hue Saturation. Notice that the Hue Saturation adjustment layer we just added automatically has its own mask layer. Right now, if we change the hue, the whole image is affected. I want to just change the hue and saturation for the upper half of the image. So I'll make a selection with the Rectangle Select tool of the bottom half of the image. With the Hue Saturation mask selected, I'll use the Paint Bucket tool to fill it in with black, masking that area from being affected by the adjustment layer. Then I'll just use the Brush tool to mask out her hair. Now we can adjust the Hue and Saturation without affecting the bottom half of the image. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.